Kyra and welcome back to my channel. So for today's video, y'all, I'm so excited to bring you guys my highly requested video, which is my no foundation makeup routine. So if you guys follow me on Instagram, then you guys know that recently I've been talking about this no foundation makeup routine that I have been trying to perfect. And I think that I finally perfected it. And I'm so excited to share with you guys because this look is literally a game changer, especially during these hot summer months, you guys. It's August and I feel like this is like dead in the heat of the summer. We're like 104, 105 here. It's crazy. And whenever it's this hot, I don't want to put on foundation. But there are days that I want to look more put together. Um, and that I want to look a little bit more done up than like my normal go-to like no makeup makeup look um, Where I just put on some concealer some lip gloss some brows and that's it This is a little bit more glammed up. It honestly kind of gives you basically the same finish as you would get Like if you were to do a full face of makeup But it's just because of course we're not doing foundation It's not as much coverage, which is totally okay with me first up. I went ahead and already applied SPF off camera but you want to make sure that you first go ahead and moisturize. Hydration is the key with this look because you want your skin to be nice and supple and plump and it's really, really moisturized. So I'm going to take the number seven Hydroluminous Water Surge Gel. I normally do use my go-to Charlotte Tilbury Magic Cream, but for some reason this morning I cannot find it. I'm pretty sure Dion has placed it somewhere because he loves to steal my stuff. So in the meantime, I'm going to use number seven Hydroluminous Moisturizer. And this one here is also really good. Like it is so moisturizing and it makes your skin feel like you just got drenched with water. It's so good. And I also want to really do this look for you guys in natural sunlight. Just so you can get an idea of how this makeup look really, really looks out and about during the day. So we're all nice and moisturized. Again, this is such an important step. Whether you're dry, combination oily, whatever your skin type, you have to moisturize for this look. Well, honestly, moisturize every day regardless, but especially for this look, you wanna really be nice and moisturized. So, okay, that's all done. Now I'm gonna go ahead and do my primer. You guys know that normally I love to reach for my Becca, right? The only thing with the Becca Primer and this look here is that because we're not using any sort of foundation The Becca primer does not work for this particular look and technique Because the Becca primer tends to dry out and kind of you know create those little patchy areas It only really works well if you apply a foundation on top of it to help even it out But because we're not using a foundation with this look if I just apply the Becca and it dries up and I go over that with powder it looks terrible because the powder attaches to the Becca primer and it creates these little small patches all over it and it just does not work at all with this look. So I had to go ahead and find an alternative. And fortunately, I recently found the Fenty Beauty Mattifying Primer, this one here that I recently did a review on. And this is the perfect formula for this look, okay? And the reason why is because it is a lot thinner and a lot lighter and a lot more creamier, it won't create those dry patches. So it'll be perfect for applying powder and concealer because it doesn't stick to the primer. Does that make sense? Okay, so taking that Fenty True Matte Pro Filter Mattifying Primer on my hand and just applying this all over. And again, this one's like super lightweight and creamy. So you can apply it like a moisturizer and it'll still keep your face nice and matte. And I always go in and apply a little bit more in the areas that I typically get really oily, which is like my nose, my forehead, and my lower cheek area. You want that nice and matte. And you want to keep blotting it in until it's all nice and absorbed into the skin. So primer is all absorbed. Now, if you guys remember, whenever I reviewed this primer, I did note that in my opinion, this is not great for minimizing pores. In my opinion, it just doesn't blur them or anything. So I do actually go in with the smoothing primer. It's gonna help minimize the pores in my lower cheek area because that's where my pores are just humongous. So I'm taking my Tarte Clean Slate Primer and just popping that right here. And it's only in the area that I have those larger pores. 
And I'm telling you guys, even though this is like no foundation, this look does require multiple steps. But I will say that it is pretty quick. And it's like once you get it down, it takes like 10, maybe 15 minutes to do. But it's actually really quick. And it's like the perfect look for like, you know, work in the morning. You know, just if you're in a rush, this is the perfect look to go to. But it is not like a three-step formula okay it does take some time it does take multiple steps okay. next up is going to be color correcting okay so you guys know typically whenever i use foundation i do not normally color correct i'm not a huge 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 stickler about like not having any you know blemishes peek through my foundation to me it's just it's skin like if you have blemishes you have blemishes it is what it is but because you're not using foundation i really like to color correct under here especially under here where I have my dark spots you guys see those like I have two dark spots right here and I do like to color correct those and the reason why is because if I go straight in with concealer again we're not using foundation so we don't have anything to kind of color correct all over or like to help even out our skin tone so if I just go in with straight concealer you can still see those spots through the concealer and it doesn't really give me like that flawless finish that I want. I recently discovered a new drugstore color corrector and this in my opinion is a really good dupe, a really good affordable dupe for the MAC Peach Luster Prep and Prime Pen. And the reason why is because it is the same peach color tone as the Peach Luster and it's the same general concept because it is a pin form and you just twist up the bottom and the product comes out the top, right? So this is the Maybelline New York Master Camo Crayon Corrector Pin in the shade 50. And again, it looks like this and it is bomb. So I'll take it, twist it up, and then pack on just a little bit here. And then use a brush, just kind of smooth that all out because I only really want to color correct where the dark spot is like not all over I don't need corrector all over my face just essentially where the dark spot is and see how just that small amount of product alone helped to kind of even out those dark spots so and that really does make a huge 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 difference whenever it comes to our concealer okay so we have color corrected and now it's time to conceal so because you're not using any foundation there are still some areas that I do want to spot treat okay so essentially it's the areas where I do have a little bit of hyperpigmentation so I have some areas down here on my lower jawline even a little area right here along my cheekbone um, same thing on this side I do want of course want to spot treat under my eyes and also a little bit around my mouth now, I'm not applying a whole lot of product there because, of course, again, I want to keep this look very light um, and I want my skin to breathe. But a little bit of concealer, especially a little bit of a full coverage concealer, goes a long way. Now, what I have been using is I have been using the L'Oreal Infallible Full Wear Concealer in the shade Honey. Now, Honey is the one that is close to my skin tone and I use this one to spot treat. But whenever I want to go in and highlight after this step, I also use the same concealer but in a different shade. So I use the shade Honey to spot treat and then I use the shade Caramel to highlight, which you guys will see here in a second. But this one again is a really good one to spot treat because it is full coverage. So a little bit goes a long way. So I'll take this and apply it there. I'll apply some here. Not a whole lot, and then I'll just take that same brush that I used to blend in that color corrector and just take this and just blend in that concealer. So it basically disappears. Look at that. You see how we just used a few little dabs of the brush and a little bit of concealer to help even out that area. So even though I'm not using foundation, we are cheating just a bit with the concealer, but you guys know, y'all know how it is. There is a huge difference between foundation and concealer in terms of how it feels on the skin and how it wears. So for me, I don't mind, you know, using a little bit more concealer to kind of help color correct. 
and spot treat so I can get that same flawless finish as using foundation. Like again, look at that. Just a little bit of a full coverage concealer goes a long way. Same thing under my eyes. And this is where color correcting with that pen plays a huge role because if we hadn't color corrected before this and we just went in straight with concealer, then what would have happened is you would have still been able to see some of that darkness underneath. And then I'll just use whatever's left on my brush to go over my forehead, which again, there's not really much needed there anyways, but. That is how it looks after I go ahead and spot treat. And there's our face spot treated. So again, it's really nice and even. We didn't apply concealer everywhere, of course, but you see how just applying a skin tone concealer just to kind of spot treat those areas really helps just make your base really nice and flawless. So we've gone ahead and spot treated it, so now it's time for us to highlight. And this is actually pretty simple because I honestly really just focus the concealer like right here under my eyes. And then I'll just use whatever is left over on my beauty blender to apply on the bridge of my nose and my forehead. I don't apply too much there because I'm not going to be doing a full-fledged, you know, cream contour and, you know, heavy bronzer and all that. I want to still keep it pretty natural. So taking the shade Caramel and applying a little bit there and then just smidge it here. Okay, and then taking my beauty sponge and just blending this out. And I did not apply much at all. Again, I want a really soft but still natural highlight like so just to look more awake. And also, I have a trick to brighten your under eyes up even more at the end. So just wait, just, just wait, y'all. So that is the highlight, and I'll take whatever's left on my beauty sponge and kind of blend this out and apply a little bit here in the center. But again, I don't apply much there because I'm not doing a heavy contour or like that. So I just want this to be really nice and natural, like so. So you see how it looks, you know, nice and natural. I do have that dimension there. I have the highlighted areas but it's still soft and natural. Well, that is what we want. Okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead and of course set our concealer, our holiday area. So I'm gonna be using the NYX HD Finishing Powder in the shade Translucent. And I have been loving this one because first of all, it applies pretty much translucent and it's affordable. And I love that it's a pressed powder so it does not get messy, okay? So what I do is I take my beauty blender, same thing, look up, blend out those creases and then take a brush dab it into the powder and just set like so and it sets it in place and of course mattifies it but it also is a lot easier to work with this versus like a loose powder and this i think was like eight dollars on those it's really expensive so again other side look up Blend out those creases and then a brush. And then set those areas. Okay, so we have to set our under eye area. And also set right there and also a bridge of my nose. As well as everywhere else. Now the reason why I just go ahead and set the rest of my face with this powder it's because this is, again, this is a HD finishing powder. So first of all, make sure skin look like skin is actually really, really good. And it keeps your face pretty matte throughout the day. Honestly, like it's a really good powder. Now, I could have gone in and set with like a skin tone powder. I put it in the whole nine. But I want to at least try to keep this look as minimal as possible. So I just use this powder for all the steps. I'm going to go ahead and now bronze my skin. And yes, I do bronze even with this look because it is important that I do add back in some of that dimension. So I'm taking my The Balm Take Home The Bronze Anti-Orange Bronzer in the shade Grammy. Looks like this. And I love using this one because it is so small and compact. So it literally takes up no room in your travel kit. Taking my Laura Mercier. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mention that the brush that I used to set my under eye area and the rest of my face was actually the Sigma Concealer Blend Kabuki Brush which is the number F79. I love this brush. 
especially for setting under my eyes with like a really you know fine powder because it's like tapered it's really 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 good so now for bronzer i'm using the laura mercier bronzing brush it's tapping that and then hitting my normal go-to areas so my forehead bring back the color to the face my cheekbone and a little bit more here on this side All right, and now it's like Kyra again, once I apply the bronzer. Okay, the can't forget the nose, I'm gonna take my Sonia Kasia contour brush and just lightly go over the sides of my nose and I drag it into my crease just to add some warmth there as well. All right, y'all, now I'm really almost done. Okay, taking my Anastasia Beverly Hills Cocktail Party Blush Trio, it looks like this. I love, love, love all the shades on different tones. It's gorgeous. Taking a fluffy brush, just rolling in all three. Just applying some blush to my cheeks. I could not do any sort of like fresh, you know, natural daytime look without blush. Because I feel like blush is kind of like what brings back in that color and that softness of the look. So it's like a necessity for me. All right, so here's something new. So for this more natural look, I have been loving using a liquid illuminator because I feel like it helps to prevent you from using too many powders. And this just gives your skin like the most natural, glowy, glow from within kind of look. It's gorgeous. So I'm gonna be using the Balm Bonnie Duminizer. And it looks like this, okay? It actually comes like in a wand. But what I do actually is I take it and apply it on my fingers first, like so. And then warm it up first. I like to warm it up first because I feel like if I go in straight with product, it gets a little bit too crazy. So I'll take it, kind of warm it up, and then apply it like right, like all of this, watch. Apply it like right where I normally highlight. So I'll put it on my forehead. Look at that. You see how this looks really... I'm telling y'all. Get y'all get into liquid illuminator, I'm telling you. Okay, I'll do my nose, even here. And when I apply it, I just use soft patting motion. Like, that's the key. I apply some here. Keep it slow. Even some on my lip, just for the extra bit of shine, the high points of the cheeks. Also, if you don't really like to use liquid illuminators, because it can, the only thing about it is that it can get a bit messy. So the other product that I do recommend that you guys know I love is the CoverGirl Full Spectrum Sculpt Experts Versatile Cheek Palette. This one to me is unlike any other highlighter that I own because whenever you apply it, it doesn't look like powder. To me, honestly, this honestly gives off like the same finish as a little bit of because it's so finely milled and it just will like melt into the skin. Like it looks so gorgeous. So just to even top off this, want to do even more glow, I would just take this one here and even go a little bit more hand with the glow if I want it even more. But either one of these, I would say, would work. I just love the naturalness of the Balm Juminizer because it does look so natural and you can't even see it. Um, but this is also really, really good as well. Okay, so now on to brows. We've done our face, we've done our blush, bronzer, highlight, the whole nine. So now it's time to do our brows. Now, one of these products I have used before, it's been a really long time, but I haven't showed it recently. So I'm going to re-show it to you guys, and then I want to introduce to you guys a new product that I have been loving lately. So for my brows, I use two different products. I like to go in with the Maybelline Tattoo Studio Brow Tint Pen, and then to make it look even more bushy, I guess you could say, I have been using this brow pen from Sally's Beauty called the Stroke of Brow Feathering Pen, and it's from Ardell. Y'all, I don't know where this feathering pin has been all my life, 
but this is like the best thing ever created especially if you love a more natural fuller kind of bushy brow it is amazing because what it is is it's a pen okay that has a really 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 fine point and the way you use it is you're supposed to just use it to create natural brow strokes kind of feather in your brow but just wait till y'all see how it applies because it makes such a huge difference so first i'll brush them up like so and I have been growing my brows out, you guys, and I actually have been grooming them myself because I'm trying to grow them out and I don't want anyone to mess them up. So they are a little bit fuller than normal. Okay. All right. So the way the pin is, is it has these like three prongs on them and you just take it and kind of just use those three prongs to create natural brow strokes. But you have to press the side of the product against your brow and just swipe it up like this. And essentially those three prongs actually draws in like natural brow strokes. So it's completely different from using a pencil because it makes them look a lot more natural and almost looks like it's like microbladed if you want to go for that look. Like it looks more like microbladed as opposed to like more filled in. So again, taking it and I kind of uh, point it downwards and just press it up against my brow and flip it upward. All right, so those are my brows. You guys see like how natural it looks like. It looks so good and it just gives me like the prettiest like bushy brow vibe, just even that product alone. And this is my brow so far. Now, I could totally leave it just like this because this even on its own looks amazing. Like, I just love the way this whole look looks, honestly. It's totally my vibe. I love it. But I definitely want to take it up even more. And this is where the Ardell Stroke of Brow Feathering Pin comes in. Okay, so I got this in the shade medium brown. Oh, no, sorry, dark brown. And again, it has a really, really, really fine point. Okay, so how you use it is you just take the pin and you just and you just kind of go like this. Just like light brow strokes, you guys, like the lightest brow strokes. And what happens is, is it kind of like over exaggerated it, just kind of show you guys what I mean. But you see how like down here, it creates those like natural brow strokes. It's insane what it can do, seriously. So my brows went from looking really sparse to now looking nice and full. And this is what gives you like the most beautiful brow. I I'm serious, <laughs> I'm excited about it because I love this freaking brow pin. Like just look at my brows y'all. Look at how full and bushy and like natural looks like this. Again, this is totally my vibe. Like I love, love, love this. So again, on this side. And then if you go a little bit overboard, you can just take a spoolie and kind of just brush it out and kind of soften some of those lines. But it's just crazy how those two products can basically completely transform your brow. Like, completely transform them. Like, look at how they look. It's so crazy. And again, that's all personal preference. I have just been loving more of a bushy brow lately. So that's totally my jam. But if it's not your jam, just skip that step. But for me, so now going in with mascara, I'm going to take the Urban Decay Perversion Bigger Blacker Bolder Mascara. And I have been loving this one lately. And I love this one because it does such a good job of separating my curly lashes and also lengthening them as well. And I will do my top and bottoms. Okay, can't forget to add a pop of highlight in the inner corner. This is like my, I, I, I have to do this whenever I do a more natural look. Well, I do this with every look, but especially for this type of look, I have to have some sort of glow. 
So if you want to be even more extra, another step that you can do is to add in some faux freckles. So what I have been doing is I've been taking this uh, e.l.f. brow tint gel. It's actually for your brows because it has a mascara wand, but it's actually also really good for applying on faux freckles. And this is in the shade medium. So let's take the end of it with a little bit of product. Keywords a little bit because you don't want to apply too much because it's a lot harder to take it away. So let's take it. Kind of dot the end of the spoolie or the mascara wand kind of all over. Okay. And then my finger and just go right over those spots to remove that excess product. Kind of tone it down a little bit. Because you want, of course, it to look natural, right? So you don't want those big old spots there looking crazy. And like once you kind of go over with your finger, it looks a lot more natural. Okay, so of course, last but not least, we can't forget to do our lips. I'm gonna take my Cork Lip Liner by MAC. Just apply this to my lips. Like so, and then topping it off with my favorite lip gloss, this is the Urban Decay Hi-Fi Shine Lip Gloss in the shade Midnight Cowgirl. And it's hawking this right on top. And I love this look because honestly, it can go with literally any lip of your choice. I posted a picture last week where I did a, you know, really pretty berry lip. I've worn it with a berry lip, I've worn it with a red lip, with an orange lip, a coral lip. A lip gloss, a nude lip. You can do this look and wear any lip that you want. So that is also a huge benefit of doing such a natural look. Okay, and then the very last step that you actually cannot forget to do is to set your makeup. I'm going to be using the MAC Prep and Prime Spray. Fix Plus, you guys know it's my jam. And this, of course, helps not only set your makeup in place, but it also helps remove any of that powdery, you know, look. That's definitely what you do not want to have. Oh no, I forgot one more step. Oops, sorry. Okay, no, scratch that. You have one more step left. Okay, so here is the finished look, right? Looks great, flawless, I love it. But if you want it to brighten up your under eye area even more, you could take a brightening powder like this one here. It's the LA Girl Pro Face HD Matte Press Powder in the shade Nude Beige. It's gorgeous. Okay, and what I do is I'll take that same brush, that same Sigma F79 brush, and just apply a little bit under my eye. So watch. See the difference? Like that is so bomb. Just even just how it just brightens instantly makes a huge difference. So no powder, powder. And yes, I do actually apply this over my faux freckles because you can definitely still see the freckles through the powder. And this actually helps even soften them even more. Because... All right, guys, so I went ahead and popped on some earrings. I went ahead and popped on some earrings from my store. You guys know I have Boutique Shop Alira, and these are a pair of earrings from the store, which I absolutely love. They're like my favorite. They're so perfect for us this time of year, especially as we transition from summer to fall. Like they're just absolutely gorgeous and I love them. But yeah, here's my final look for my no foundation makeup routine. Um, as I mentioned, in my opinion, I love this look because it's so lightweight, it's so wearable, and it's perfect for every day, honestly all around. Like I've worn it to work, to church, on date nights. I've worn it with Dion on a date night and he loved it. Um, so it's perfect for honestly any occasion. Um, it's really soft, really glowy, and just really, really natural, which I love. I hope you guys love it as well. I do want to note two things real quick. As you guys noticed that throughout the video, I really do try my best to use drugstore products. And the reason why is because in my opinion, for more natural or more everyday looks, if you're using the product every day, that means you're quicker to go through it. And I prefer to use products that are more affordable and that are more cost efficient to restock. So I do tend to lean more towards drugstore products. Also, I wanted to note that even though I'm talking through this video, I know it seemed a bit long because I am talking through it 
and explaining each step in detail to you guys. But honestly, whenever I do this look by myself without talking, it takes me about 10 or maybe 15 minutes to do it. Like it's super quick and easy. And that's why I love it for more every day. Again, really quick and easy. And that is why I love this look. And I hope you guys did as well. So if you guys enjoyed this no foundation makeup routine, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And I will catch you guys in the next video. Bye guys.